All right. Well, uh, thank you for having me and uh, thank you everybody for joining. And I, I cannot say how excited I am uh, uh, about being here. So I hope that you will find this uh, presentation interesting. Okay. <clears throat> so today uh, I want to talk about a subject of uh, vital importance and that I am extremely passionate about. Uh, to the point that I have even created and I'm currently teaching a uh, eight weeks long course focused on this very subject. This subject uh, is now more uh, important than ever, I think, considering the current state of the online art community, uh, its trends and how fast it has been uh, growing in the latest years, thanks to the internet, of course, and uh, social media. So I want to talk about visual narrative and its profound impact in art and the worrying lack of understanding of its fundamentals and uses among the community, but most importantly among uh, students and newcomers that want to make the jump into the profession. So um, there are several reasons for this issue, I think. Uh, first, we as artists, uh, whenever we create any type of artwork, paintings, uh, drawings, sculptures, 3D scenes, um, uh, hard surface uh, models or textures, anything, you name it, uh, we need to have an understanding, a control and certain degree of mastery over the fundamentals of art. That understanding and mastery of these fundamentals is a very arduous journey out of itself. And for the, uh, for the most part, it takes many, many years of continuous grind of practice and study in order to achieve it to a minimum degree, right? Uh, that is why it tends to happen very often that especially among students and beginners, they get trapped in this loop of getting obsessed with reaching that goal of becoming masters with uh, lights or perspective, or creating drawings with perfect anatomy or being perfect modelers. Uh, everything turns around how good of a painter you are or a drawer on a technical level and how you compare to others. Everything is measured according to the technical skills alone. And of course, that is a very natural thing to happen due to the time and effort invested in it. Social media certainly does not help either, especially with certain platforms uh, that are used by professionals and uh, aspiring uh, professionals as portfolio galleries for getting new jobs, attracting uh, new clients and therefore most of the content shared in these platforms it's focused mainly on showcasing the technical skills of the artists which for the most part or not exclusively means or translate into compelling pieces of artwork but just skillfully done and also in this day and age the fact that most of the courses tutorials and educational content you encounter out there in schools and especially on the internet only focus on the technical sides of things about teaching uh, different types of techniques and programs and software and how to paint and draw and um, I mean you name it and all of these doesn't help either and don't get me wrong that is a very, very relevant and important thing, but it leaves at the same time a huge vacuum on the very important topic of teaching about the knowledge of art and creates at the same time a narrow view and shallow perception of what art is all about. And especially once again for new and young artists. Living in this way aside the ultimate aspect of creating art which is 
expressing and communicating through your work in a way that will resonate with people in a compelling way. And um, this is a very big problem and also very easy to check. I'm sure you have all experienced this uh, on your own. If you look at any online uh, portfolio site, like uh, our station, for example, after a good look, you will notice that there is an infinite amount of artwork that on one hand has been done with a very high level of technical skills, but on the other hand still remains shallow, repetitive and plain, uh, one could say. In other words, images that will not be remembered just after some few days. Um, <clears throat> How many, many, many times have you seen the same barbarian dude with an axe or and big muscles, or the same type of sci-fi soldier robot, or the omnipresent hot warrior chick with uh, you know big boobs and ridiculous armor, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. But that all share in many, many cases also the trait or feature of being very beautifully rendered and modeled. So yes, I bet it has been many times, right? Only those few artists that understand that skills alone are pointless and focus instead of putting those skills to help them to communicate something in a compelling way will achieve a higher impact and will be highly appreciated. And that is what I want to talk about the, that is why I want to talk about this subject uh, to burst the bubble and hopefully trigger in you this shift in perception to understand that being extremely skillful technically does not make you necessarily a good artist, but your ability to communicate ideas, to tell powerful and moving stories, to inspire and trigger your audience. Think about this. All great artists and masters through history are remembered and appreciated not because of the technical skills alone, but because of the use of those same skills as a tool to transmit something profound to their audience. The technical skills are ultimately not a goal out of the, uh, sorry, not a goal out of themselves, but a mean to an end, which is to communicate something to your audience. Okay, so why is the concept of narrative so relevant and important as a tool for artists, you may be asking? Uh, okay, so well, for that, we must take a small look into our past as a species. Kind of strange thinking that we are talking about art, but yes. <laughs> Narrative has been part of our history as a species since the very, very beginning. And scientists even argue that it has been, in fact, shaped, that it has shaped our own evolution apart from other animals. The invention of uh, language opened the gates of narrative, and that allowed early humans to learn and share experiences for, uh, from each other increasing the cooperation and making them more competitive uh, uh, than other species. Uh, with the narrative as a tool came the invention of fiction and with fiction, stories. Think about it. Our ancestors, I mean, like many hundreds, thousands of years, I, I'm, I'm not sure at the moment, but yeah, many from the very, very beginning, they used to gather around the fire and tell stories to each other. They told of the adventures of the day, of uh, their experiences, uh, their fears, uh, their struggles, and of course, their hopes as well. They shared ancient tales of wisdom, adventures and uh, learning. Through the stories, they made sense of their lives 
and the world around them. They created a sh and shared this, a sense of purpose and educated one another about their history and their destiny. And stories are constructed by narratives. Our relation with stories as a species is so profound that as stories are the product of our mind, our mind are also the product of stories as we think, dream, and understand the world around us through stories. It is actually quite insane if you think about it. Stories have shaped our mind through evolution, resulting in the human brain being literally wired for stories. We could say that we, the human species, we process our world in narrative. And that is why narrative is potentially our biggest and more powerful tool as artists. Let's see. Uh, if we use a metaphor here that we can see here, think of artists that don't use narrative in their work as primitive apes struggling to survive. and uh, narratives as the ultimate tool for survival and domination in the wild and dangerous world of artistic evolution. Only those artists that understand the importance of narrative and use it with the intent in their work will evolve into the, a new and more powerful and successful stage as an artist in their artistic journey. So, now you know. You want to become a great artist? Yes? In that case, smash the hell out of the art with the evil narratives. Very simple. That passion. How he constructs those narratives, my goodness, look at him. Yeah, bring it, bring it those narratives, there you go. Come on, yeah. You will become a master, you will be remembering history. There you go. All right. So, okay. Now that we are all on the same page, and I have made my point about how important the use of narrative is in art. It would be nice to look at what this exactly means and what it implies in your creative process. For that, you must understand and shift your view to change your perspective about the role of technical skills and the use of the fundamentals of art. And uh, this is the key, guys. So please pay attention. As we have discussed already, achieving technical mastery over the fundamentals of art should not be your ultimate goal as an artist, but how you use them. The intention under which you use them. You need to start thinking and viewing these fundamentals only as tools at your disposal, tools to communicate something compelling to your audience. Could be a story, could be a mood, a feeling, an idea, you name it. If I use another metaphor here, let's say uh, that you are a writer. In order to write, you need to know, understand, and master the fundamentals of reading and writing, right? So that would be, well, first, knowing your alphabet, 
knowing how to combine the letters to create words. Then you will need to master orthography to spell these words correctly and uh, grammar to build sentences with a structure and meaning. Then you will also need to learn an extensive vocabulary to use in your sentences. All of these are your fundamentals, which takes a very long time to learn and master. Just think about how many years uh, it takes for people to learn uh, uh, these things. These would be uh, your equivalent to, in our case with art, uh, to perspective, uh, color theory, anatomy, composition, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And if we go into more modern um, type of things like learning the fundamentals about 3D and uh, more technical stuff. So now at this point, if you as a writer, your ultimate goal is only to write without any mistakes and with perfect grammar, showing you know mastery over the, these fundamentals you really will not achieve much in the world of literature right any other writer even writing with misspellings but that on the other hand has a compelling story to tell will get much higher and will be remembered and appreciated instead of you the difference would be in the intention on how those fundamentals are useful. Both the text on, let's say, a shampoo bottle, and uh, on the other hand, the novel Anna Karenina are perfectly written. But what makes one of these two texts a masterpiece of literature and the other one just a plain descriptive text is the use of the same fundamentals with a narrational intent. In other words, as narrative tools. And in case you did not like this uh, metaphor or it was a little bit too, I don't know, uh, obscure, I have uh, this other one here that uh, resumes it very clearly. All right, so in case it was not clear, the guy with the sword is the one that did not use the fundamentals as narrative tools, okay? All right. So, yes, please do not neglect technical skills. Practice a lot and aim to master those fundamentals. But never forget that those skills are just a mean to an end. A set of tools that will help you to communicate in the best possible way with your audience. And uh, the more fundamentals you understand and master, the more tools you will have at your disposal. But at the end of the day, everything will come to how you use those tools. In our case, with uh, visual arts, those fundamentals uh, to use a narrative tools are going to be quite many. Um, each of them with their specific purpose and with different strengths and limitations depending on the narrative you want to use in your work. So let's take a look. <clears throat> So I'm just gonna go very um, fast, uh, like a, an overview. So <clears throat> in first we have probably the most important of them and the one that will have the higher impact, composition. No image and narrative will be successful without a careful plan and design composition to support it. And this uh, fundamental is extremely huge and deep so yeah there is a lot to talk about it but yeah we will leave it there second of these tools but equally important is value value is a key one especially if we are talking about painting 
but in other type of images as well. And it is what will make your picture read and will set the foundation for volumes and lights and therefore an extremely powerful narrative tool in your image. Then we have uh, lighting and colors, of course. Um, a very strong tool for narrative, thanks to their inherent and uh, sorry, their inherent suggestive qualities and their capabilities to influence moods. Then, another very important asset in your toolbox for narrative, and uh, <clears throat> sadly and surprisingly, I think, often disregarded as such, and it is the use of characters in your images or films. I mean, this is, it's applied to anything. And it comes with its own type of uh, tools or one could say subcategory of tools like proportions and anatomy, visual weight, shapes, acting, uh, comprising, uh, posing, gesture, expressions, acting overall, and then clothing and props. In many cases, characters will be the focus of the image or a frame or scene on your video. And the actors in it will play a major role in displaying your narrative. So they are extremely powerful narrative tools for you to use as an artist. Another tool at your disposal to help you to reinforce a narrative, and that is also often missed, is the use of artistic styles. Normally regarded just as a personal preferences, uh, preference that uh, answers to the subjective taste of the author, but that can become extremely powerful when chosen appropriately to support a given narrative. That this tool might seem kind of uh, obvious, especially within the professional uh, world, you know, like film and stuff like that, but it's very, very much uh, missed in many cases in people that are trying to paint and in other areas of uh, art. <clears throat> then we have symbolism. Using all type of visual metaphors from cultural and historical sources. This is also a very powerful narrative tool to use. Then uh, we have also mood and atmosphere. And uh, they are a subtle tool to use, but once again, one that if chosen correctly and per uh, per oh my goodness, with purpose, <laughs> can create a great impact and uh, in the perception of your narrative by your audience. And last but not least in any way, we have contrast. This one is a special one and uh, difficult to classify among all the previous ones. And the reason for that is because contrast is a constant concept used within all the fundamentals we have seen already. So yes, once again, the important thing is to start viewing the fundamentals of art, not as tools to just construct visually appealing images, which they, of course, are uh, as well, but most importantly, as narrative tools. You start to see a trend here, right? But since, yeah, like I was saying on the beginning, since there is little time uh, for this presentation, I will not dive farther into them, even though there is tons of things to talk about it. Uh, and I'm not going to talk uh, either about many of the other concepts and subjects uh, relevant to the topic. But instead, I want to uh, use the time left to talk about another vital and critical element in the, um, <clears throat> in the process of using narrative in your art. And that is the core of the problem we are discussing regarding just having pretty images, but that are shallow and empty. In order to use narrative to communicate anything, you must have something to say in the first place, something to express. 
what we could call the concept of subject uh, matter. We could say that the subject matter is the core idea behind the uh, image, the DNA uh, that will define the piece of art, your image. In most cases, that will most probably be a story, an idea, a mood, or a feeling. And even though you might think uh, of this as a given, the fact is that in any art, you know that you think that it must necessarily start with a core idea, a uh, subject matter. It is not surprising to encounter a lot of artists, and once again, especially beginners and students, that start working on a piece without anything to say at all with it but just maybe a superficial recollection of the elements they want in it. Like, I want a cool warrior and perhaps with an armor covered with spikes. Or, I don't know, a couple, a man and a woman sitting on a bench and some type of blue color, etc., etc. Um... This is a very common issue that I encounter myself with my students during my course, and that surprisingly seems to be very widely spread in general. I mean, we get obsessed with certain subjects, you know, like, especially uh, if you want to do design and stuff like that, I'm guilty of this, uh, of, of this as well. But if, if we go back to the metaphor or, of uh, writing, Engaging the process of creating an image in this way without something to say and just caring about some visual elements uh, firsthand, it is going to be like uh, writing a plain report. All the visual elements will be there, but it will feel dull and without soul. While, on the other hand, if you have a subject matter from the very beginning, something to say, it will be more like writing a story with a plot, characters, emotions, etc., etc. So you see there the difference. As we have seen, in order to become great, an image does not necessarily need to have a complicated or profound subject matter in itself, but how that subject matter is communicated through the use of narrative. There are plenty of masterpieces where the subject matter is simple and straightforward, but what elevates it to greatness is the visual narrative used by the author to communicate it. So the important aspect of it is to have a clear vision of what you want to communicate when you create your image. Because by doing so, regardless of what it is that you want to express, an abstract idea, a mood, a story, etc., etc., it will allow you to focus all your creative energy choosing the best suited narrative for them. And hopefully managing to elevate it to a level of greatness instead of working blindly and hoping for a happy accident to occur. This is going to be the first step into creating a process where you have the control from the very beginning to the end. So, for example, what makes this painting great? Why is this painting considered a masterpiece in the history of art? It is certainly not because of the different characters and elements in it out of themselves, like separate uh, elements, but because the subject matter that lays in its foundation, that direct which, what elements, and how they are being displayed to communicate that same subject matter. In this case, this painting is not about the princess and her entourage, but about a very complex philosophical idea. But sadly, I mean, we are out of time and this is a very dense uh, talk out of in, the, in itself. 
So we'll leave here since there is no uh, much time left now. So yes, thanks a lot. Um, and of course, if you are interested in the subject and want to learn uh, more, I uh, encourage you to check my course about narrative illustration and characters that I'm um, lecturing at CGMA. And of course, if you want also check my work or contact me, you can go on social media and yeah, I will be there like anybody else. So yeah, thanks a lot. Cool. All right. Uh, well, first of all, thank you for that awesome presentation. I think I speak for most of the people watching that the next time I'm at my computer making stuff, I'm going to feel like that ape smashing bones. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was great. Um, so let's see. Uh, we're waiting for some questions to come in, but I have some other ones uh, that I already have for you that we're going to jump right. into. So, um, yes, let's see. Um, I'm going to pick a good one here. So, do you still do a lot of personal artwork, or does your work generally take over your commercial stuff, your client stuff? I uh, since I um, I left the um, the studio life, um, I have made I have made sure that I I work on my personal stuff as well. So, I think it's of great importance to still dedicate certain time to your own personal uh, work i think for your mm -hmm. sanity as a creative person and artist i think it's uh is a must if not you will burn out yeah i'm, so, I'm yes. definitely the same like i spend a lot of time on my own stuff as well i think it's uh definitely an advantage of working freelance so yeah cool um, so let's see. Yeah, I think this one is interesting because uh, we, when we met each other, what is it now, three or four years ago, we had like a VR room at, um, yeah. in Frankfurt. And I was wondering, sure. have you tried painting in VR at all since? Because I remember we had a brief conversation about it, but. Uh, yeah, I have, I have not, okay. uh, not paint. I have tried modeling and I find it, uh, very interesting, especially for uh, concept art work. Mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't had any need uh, professionally yet to use it. Not that experience um, uh, okay. with that. But yeah, I have tried it, and I think it's a very um, powerful tool. Cool. For okay. Designers specifically. Yeah. 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 It, I feel you. Yeah, I've tried it um, a little bit, but I um, I kind of run into the fact that I can't draw to save my life. I need the computer to do everything <laughs> for me. Um, but yeah, we've got another question actually coming in from the audience, uh, saying in your artworks you tend to have a sort of kind of uh, in between quotes ugly or rather non idealized version of faces and such especially in regards to the space marines um but also uh -huh. when it comes to sci-fi and ball pen drawings is there like why is that is there a specific reason for that or for so i think what they're me? yeah mostly talking about is um i think it probably actually ties in quite well with your talk that a lot of the faces that you see, you generally have like a lot of scars and stuff. And yeah. Like they've, they've looked like they've been through some stuff, basically. Yeah, exactly. So it's always understanding in this case is some illustration work. So it's understanding the core narrative intent of that world and characters. Okay. So if I just put them, um, I don't know, nice looking shaved and and with no scars when they are supposed to be um warriors that live hundreds of years and they are in completely insane battlefields with apocalyptic weapons mm -hmm. it would feel very weird that they don't have a single scratch true so true, yeah. it's yeah it's a good example of building a narrative through, in this case, the depiction of their characters. Cool. Okay, so let's see. I'm looking through some more questions. Um, are there any software packages that you you want to explore at some point, and why would it, why would you be interested in those? 
Uh, yes, uh, uh, Blender, and then um, the ones uh, referring to uh, <clears throat> VR. Okay. Because of the same reasons, because for certain type of work, I think more uh, related with films, mm -hmm. uh, concept art for films, the speed that it allows you to build something fast on 3D is unmatched, especially if the director asks you to change the angle of a scene that you, that you have done if you paint that. It will take several days maybe to do another angle, but if you do that in, in a rough 3D, then, yeah, it's, cool. it's super easy to change. So. Well, you know my door's always open for Blender, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now that, now that we have each other on Discord, weekend. yeah, you can just bug me about it. It's all good if you ever if you ever jump in. Um, so, do, 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 yeah, this one um, is kind of interesting. So, how many hours do you spend behind a computer screen uh, during like a normal workday, and like how much of that is working on art, and how much of that is maybe doing other stuff? Um, yeah. It's sadly, I, in my opinion, I think it's too, way too much. Okay. I, I spend too much time uh, in front of the computer. And it's, I would say, 95% uh, work related. Paint, well, or maybe not strictly speaking work, but painting and, and doing art stuff. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm a slave to my desk in that sense. I'm, I I enjoy doing art and yeah so yeah yeah because it's funny that you say it that way because part of that question is um like if you take a break what do you do and you think you should get out more but I think you've definitely <laughs> already answered that second bit of that question. <laughs> I, mean, I, I try to I mean I of course enjoy a lot going outside. I have a dog and we go for walks. Uh, so I try to also I'm conscious that in terms of health. Mm -hmm. reasons it's, it's not the best thing so i i do my best uh to cool. to get out of it but yeah yeah i think Still we're roughly the same age if i remember correctly so you must be starting to feel the effects of sitting behind the computer a lot for yes. like 10 years as well <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah um i think i'm in the same boat on that one so i have another question for from the audience for you do you know of any courses or resources that are good for learning how to do like wear and tear with logic so like dust and scratches or, um, you know, walls and floors having scuffness, like how kind of the idea behind how you'd apply it, how you would apply it well, um, is basically what somebody's asking. Well, that's very specific and I'm, I'm not sure I have an answer to that. A specific mm -hmm. course about that, uh, I, um, I'm yeah, or sure. even just like resources or, or um, yeah, other things that you you use to to kind of get a feel for it. Mm, no, I mean, if I have the need for something like that, I or take um, I reach my library of references that I have made myself, or just look for something similar mm -hmm. to that, but but nothing so specific as a course dedicated yeah. to that. I, I, no, I no, that's know. okay. It's just a question because I think I sort of approach it similarly. Like I'm thinking about where people would walk or maybe where people would put their hands on the wall or maybe they would lean to wait somewhere or something like that and kind of approach it that way. So I yeah. think having a course mm -hmm. for that specifically, I wouldn't, it wouldn't, doesn't jump out at me immediately either. But Yeah, uh, what, what I do with that is just... This is another very, I don't know, I take it even as a motto, so to speak, is that when I'm outside, I'm just like a, a waiter, just observing everything as much as I can. And as soon as I see something interesting, I don't know, let's say you go to during the summer to a trip to a very nice place, and you see that the in top of the roof of the church, there is a lot of pigeons and there is plenty of sheets from the pigeons. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, that's a very nice detail and I never thought about it. So, or you make a photo or you make a mental note. So yeah. you just always been observant. And if you can and you have the tool like a camera, well, now everybody has a camera with a phone, so there's no mm -hmm. excuse. You take a photo. <laughs> so you start to build a library 
that you can use later on. So mm -hmm. I think that's I think that's the way to go, just to be observant and. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, so I have two more questions coming in from the audience, and I think we're going to sort of wrap it up after that. Um, um, so uh, one of them is process-wise, how do you personally start? So um, sort of starting with like a background, then characters and lighting, for example, um, and what would you recommend for people to do? It's more of a question, um, I think, uh, let's see. Yeah, so since people tend to be very different in these regards, uh, they're just kind of interested to see how, how you construct something from scratch, basically, what your thought process is. Briefly. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or if it's uh, even the same every time, obviously. <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, it's a complicated uh, question to answer. And I'm going to go with my one of my favorite answers. And it's like, it depends. I, I never do things in a specific way because I'm always going to adapt to the needs of the image. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, I'm going to, let's say, I don't know, just for the sake of an example, if I'm doing some character design and I don't have a clear idea, and then I will spend a lot of time sketching and searching for ideas, doing research and things like that. And I will start like a more uh, methodical process step by step and building uh, on top of it. But on the other hand, if I have a very clear idea, I might just jump in uh, directly with a more direct concept instead. Yeah. Okay. Or if, let's say, it's an illustration uh, with uh, some landscape or something. And once again, I don't have a clear idea, then once again, I will start maybe sketching, then uh, if I'm not sure about the lighting or something like that, then I might start with uh, thumbnails, with values and stuff like that, and then after using colors. But on the other hand, I might have a very clear idea and then it's more straightforward. Mm -hmm. So I just jump several steps and go directly to a more advanced uh, stage of the process from the very beginning. So it really depends. Cool. And I think, I think there is some, especially, I don't know, of course, who made the question, but I, I see that a lot in students and is that they, they ask for getting like this philosophical stone of the process that if you do this in this way, it's always going to work. And I think mm -hmm. it's important to understand that there is many different ways of reaching the same goal. It just depends on what fits the needs of the image, your needs as an artist, and your skills and your knowledge. So there are many different routes. So I'm sorry that I cannot no, give no. such a No, a, a I think it's answer, actually but... a very comprehensive answer. I think it's great that you, you approach it that way. Um, you know, from my experience as well, it's, uh, yeah, sometimes, like you said, you have no idea going in, and then you just kind of go for it. Uh, and other times, you know exactly what needs to be done, then you can just very quickly and methodically build it up. Um, looks like you had another yeah. extra question coming in, but I'm going to have to be fairly quick. So let's quick fire right. these last two. All right. um, so uh, what are you looking forward to sort of, or sort of aiming towards in the coming uh, year or so or years regarding your work? Like what's your ultimate goal as an artist, maybe even? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I will go super <laughs> fast. My <laughs> ultimate goal and one that I've been building for many years since I started freelancing mm -hmm. is to finally be able to dedicate a big, chunk of my time on my personal project and uh, to take it somewhere uh, far uh, so yeah that's my cool. ultimate goal yes all right so the last question is a long question but i think it can be a fairly short answer as well um so in the last decade it's become much easier for creative people to bring their ideas to life due to the increasing availability of powerful software like blender cinema 4d who need so on um do you feel that it's much more competitive now and harder for anyone except the most talented people like the top one percent of the top one percent to make a full-time living from being a digital artist or do you think because of the accessibility of those tools um it's actually become easier for the average person to earn an income doing this kind of thing I think it's easier. That doesn't mean that, or um, to disregard the fact that the, <clears throat> also, obviously, by 
democrat democratizing so to speak yeah. that access to those tools makes it the competition more hard and and but still there is so much work the tools and the availability of knowledge and experience it's so great now that i think it's easier but once again i mean still yeah. of course there is with its challenges uh, with this competition side of things but overall i think it's it's way way easier yeah i think uh, uh i actually agree with you on that one like not only is there more like stuff to use but there's more people talking about how you use it yeah and i think that's become really cool and like we tend to talk a lot about the very very highest echelon of art like movies and games and all this stuff but mm. like in between that and people starting out there's so many different levels that you know there's totally. so much work to be found um if, totally. if you don't have anything specific in mind like whether it's a more corporate route or advertising route yeah, or whatever yeah. there's so much stuff so i i definitely yeah. agree yeah. with you on that one it's so much work mm, yeah for sure all right, I think uh, we're going to wrap it up uh, on this one. So again, thanks for, for being here, man. It was awesome seeing you again. It's um, been a pleasure. Yeah, for sure. It was an awesome talk as well. Uh, I think people really, really enjoyed it and really struck a chord. Well, I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, no worries.